In this video, I'm going to show you how to add sprite animation in your game. You can skip ahead into the video if you don't want to hear the intro, but this video is the first part of creating the main game. I did create three parts before this video and they were focused on just specific tasks from Among Us. And for those videos, I actually used some of the art from the Among Us. Now for the main game, I decided instead of trying to get all of those assets from Among Us and recreate the game, what I'm going to do is actually use some of the free assets that are available. And I'm looking at using Kenny's assets for the main game. There's going to be a link in description. And I think we can recreate the mechanics from the Among Us game with using those assets and still make the game fun to play. One benefit of going that approach instead of using Among Us assets is that I don't have to worry about the copyrights and all of that for using the art from Among Us. Now, one more thing that I'm going to change is instead of creating very long videos that are going to cover most of the game creation, I'm going to split the parts to be about a specific topic. And the reason for that is if you are not interested in one specific part or you already know how to do something, then you can skip that video and just go to the next one. That way you don't have to follow the videos one by one and trying to look through those 20 or 30 minutes of content to find the solution to a problem that you encountered. So most of the game you can create on your own. And then if you get stuck somewhere, you can look up the video and get some help that way. Because as you use Unity more and you learn, you'll be able to create most of the game without any help and without any tutorials. It's those things that you haven't done before that you actually might need to find a tutorial about to help you out if you're stuck or if you even want to see how other people are solving this issue. And maybe there's some improvements that you can find like that. Actually, that's one of the ways that I find works great for me to learn new things and new approaches is by watching someone else using the tools. And I can learn a lot doing that. That being said, let's get started with this video. So for this video, I'm going to use the Toon Characters 1 asset from Kenny's. And there are six characters. Now you can probably find tutorials on YouTube, how to import the characters and do the animations. But since I'm trying to create a complete course of some sorts, I'll cover all the steps that I take to create the game. So if you want to follow along, there's a link in the description to this asset. You can download it and follow along. So I opened my Unity project. That's the game two that I created, but you don't have to have any of this stuff. What I'm going to do is create a new scene and I'll call it main. So that's a new clean scene. There's nothing here. And if you download those assets in here, we have six folders with all the characters. So I'm going to import the mail adventure first. And here we have three options. So PNG, tile sheets and vector. So you have different options how you can import it. So if you want to use PNGs or the assets that are using are PNGs, you can go inside here and we're looking for the pose. And in here we have different pose PNGs. They're all named. So you can see right here, there's a walk zero, walk one, and all the way to walk seven. If you want to import the walk animation, what you can do is select these images, import them into Unity, make sure the texture type is Sprite. And if you want to create an animation with these sprites, you can select them and add them to your scene. When you do that, you get a prompt for naming your new animation. And that's what Unity does by default. So we can call our animation walk. And that actually creates two things. So we get the walk animation, which we just named. And also it creates an animation controller right here. We'll take a look at those two files shortly, but let's click play. And you can see that the animation is playing. So that's a simple way of creating an animation using PNG files. Now let me remove all these files. And instead, let me show you how to import using sprite sheets. So right here we have a tile sheet or a sprite sheet. And if we open uh, the tile sheet, you can see that all of the poses are inside here. So we can just add that in into Unity and it's right here. Now, if we just drag it in here, we're just going to get all of those poses and that's not what we're looking for. So what I'm going to do first is rename this file to character one. And instead of having a single sprite coming from this file, what I'm going to do is go to the inspector and where we have sprite mode, switch from single to multiple. I can click apply now, but after you do that, you can see that we have no sprites here at all and we can't drag it into our scene anymore. So to create those multiple sprites, we need to go to Sprite Editor. And if you haven't installed Sprite Editor package yet, what you have to do is go to Window, Package Manager, search for Sprite and install the 2D Sprite package. After you do that, you'll have access to the Sprite Editor. Now in Sprite Editor, right here at the top, we have the option for Slice. And there's a couple ways we can do it. So if we leave it at Automatic, 
click slice, you can see that it goes through and creates a box around the character. That's not what I want to do here. I actually want to create a same size box for every pose. And to do that, for type, I'll select grid by cell count. I can count how many columns I have here. There's nine columns and there's five rows. For columns, we'll put in nine and for rows, we'll put in five. Click slice and there you go. Now we have all the boxes are same exact size and they're sliced. Click apply. And when you do that, you can see that we have all of the sprites created right here. And now we can just drag any of them into the scene and that's going to create us a sprite. So now let's create the same walk animation and we can find it right here at the very end. Add that in. We'll call it walk. And again, it creates a walk animation file right here and also an animation controller. Click play and we have our walk animation. Now let's take a look at the walk animation file. So if you double click on that, you'll get the animation window. And in this animation window, what we can see is the sprites right here. I'm not going to go in details how to modify this, but these are keyframes and you can move them around if you want to adjust some timing. So the second file is the controller. And if we double click on that, we get our controller and the controller, it gets open inside the animator window. And this is what you actually use to control which animation is played at what time. If you have multiple animation, that's where you would include all of them. And also you make transitions here to other animations based on some kind of state. So let's go ahead and create another animation. And the one that I'm going to create right now is the run animation these three sprites right here. So we can select those. But if we drag them into a scene, just how we created the first one and name it run, we're going to create an animation, but we'll also create another controller. And in this case, I'm not actually looking for another controller. I just want the animation. So you could just remove that and just leave the animation. But the other way of creating an animation is by selecting those sprites. And instead of dragging into the scene, what you can do is create and in here, select animation. When you do that, a new animation file gets created. We can name it run. And now if we open it up, we can see that those sprites that we had selected actually are used here to create this animation. So that is the way you create an animation. And in fact, if we want to create an idle animation, when we drag in one image inside here, the animation is not going to be created. So you have to go through this process right here and go to create animation and name it idle. And now we have an animation with just one sprite. Now we can go inside of our animation controller and add the animations that we just created. So the idle animation and the run animation. What we have set up here is that on entry, we start running the walk animation. And it's because the walk animation is the one that we created first. So instead of entry going to walk animation, I want to use the idle animation. And you can do that by right clicking and there's an option for set layer default state. So click that. And now when our game starts, we're going to start at the idle state. If we want to transition from idle to a walk animation, we can right click on the idle animation and make a transition. That gives us an error and we can connect it, for instance, to walk. If we do that, what's going to happen is after the idle animation runs once, it's going to transition to the walk animation. So you can actually select this transition right here and you'll see more information about the transition here. Now, if you want to control when the animation goes from idle to walk, you can include conditions that need to be matched for the transition to actually happen. You can click add and currently we have no parameters and creating conditions for the animation. We're going to take a look in the next part. But for now, if I actually click play right now, it's going to go to the idle state and then transition into the walk animation. And it's going to continue looping through that. So I hope you found something useful in this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.